Asking and receiving. What could go wrong? We've all had it drilled into our wooden little heads since we were wee ones. Ask and you shall receive. And for many of us, the full meaning of that simple phrase has escaped our complete comprehension for most of our lives. First of all, just asking does not imply that I'm ready to accept what comes as a result of the ask. I've been asking and asking and nothing is showing up, is a common lament. Nowhere more common than in my own life, I dare say. Well, says the lightly sarcastic voice of my guide, Marty, asking ain't receiving, buddy, in his best Robert De Niro. You have to be completely, and I mean completely, willing to receive the result of what you're asking for. Marty continues on. What you do is ask, a lot by the way, and then when stuff starts showing up, the first thing you do is judge it. Come to a conclusion about its value, and then go back to asking. You see, the thing you ask for has just started to show up, and rather than welcome it into your life, you give it the third degree. No wonder stuff stops showing up. It's scared of you. I have to admit that I do catch myself doing that now and then, but now that Marty has made a bigger deal of it, I see that my critical nitpicking was like putting a giant fire-breathing dragon at the entrance of my life with a big sign, Perish those who enter this way. Yikes. The other thing, Marty says, sighing, you've got to see how what is showing up is exactly what you're asking for. Rather than criticizing what's showing up, how about changing what you're asking, huh, bub? Ouch. And this is where I can use some other assistance tools, such as what else is possible in receiving what I'm asking for? What else can I ask for that more closely matches what I desire? Or, if I really want to gain some revealing awareness, what is the lie in what I'm asking for that keeps me from receiving it? I see Marty is giving me his thumbs up. Okay, that's a good start. Now, what we need to do is look at how you're being a big, fat know-it-all. Uh-oh, <laughs> I've been accused of that by a couple of my ex-wives. Look, if what you know is causing you to want something other than what you have, then that something is not something you know about, capiche? You want something different, and then when it starts showing up, what do you do? Eh, that doesn't work. Or, I already know that. Or, I've seen that before. Uh, newsflash, no, you haven't. Marty is looking at me like my high school English teacher did when I tried to correct her and I was incorrect myself. Again, say you are looking for a new, different, bigger, better way to promote the business. And then your cute little blonde neighbor comes over and starts talking about how good she is at social media. And your response is, Nah, that doesn't work for my business. Then you're being a big fat know-it-all. Maybe she is the exact person to tell you the answer to your question, being the messenger of the universe and all. And instead, you start shooting her down and dissing everything. Is it any wonder you aren't receiving when you do that? Again, ouch. I'm seeing that when the universe sends an answer via a person, and you interpret that what you are hearing from them is stuff you already know, then you're not receiving what you asked for. Instead, how about you prick their brain? Find out what it is that they know that you don't that is the answer to what you've been asking for. Bravo, mate! Marty is chiming in with his best Australian. Saying or thinking that you know something doesn't get you anything new. Being curious about what the hell you don't know is a much more fruitful path. In fact, it's pretty much the only path to discovery. I'm nodding my head. Okay, this know-it-all nitpicker is choosing another way to be. I hereby proclaim to the universe, I am ready, really ready, to receive. Join me, won't you? 
You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.